Paul's second epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, revealed from heaven, 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 1 to 2 Paul, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, this is always the first word you see in an epistle written by the Apostle Paul. Hebrews cannot be written by Paul according to Hebrews 2 verse 3. You will understand what that means when you learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Silvanus, he served with Paul in Greece. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 19. Timotheus, Timothy. Grace, God is dispensing grace to us in this present dispensation, not the law that was dispensed to Israel by Moses at Mount Sinai. Peace. God is at peace with us today because of what His Son did for us on the cross. Grace and peace are from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, not Paul. This is not a greeting to the Philippians, but a statement of what we have in Christ today. Colossians 1 verse 20, And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Meet, fit. 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 4-5, So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. The churches of God, other grace assemblies that Paul had started. A manifest token. The word manifest means to make known, and a token is a sign. When the righteous suffer persecution, they make known the righteous judgment of God. The kingdom of God, this is not the kingdom of heaven spoken of in Matthew's gospel. That is the literal, physical, visible earthly kingdom that will come upon the earth immediately following the tribulation period. The kingdom of God is the all-encompassing kingdom of God that the kingdom of heaven is just a small part of. 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 6 to 8 Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven, we will rest with Paul and the Thessalonian believers, as the world is experiencing God's wrath during the tribulation period. The context here, however, is at Christ's return from heaven with his mighty angels to set up his kingdom, not at the rapture. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, God is at peace with us, the body of Christ today, because of Christ's work for us on the cross. When this dispensation ends at the rapture however, he will be taking vengeance on them that know not God during the time of Jacob's trouble. Isaiah 63 verse 4 For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Jeremiah 46 verse 10 For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Isaiah 61 verse 2 To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is speaking about the gospel of the kingdom, which is the same gospel that Jesus and the twelve preached. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23 It will be preached again during the tribulation period. Matthew 24 verse 14 This was not the gospel that Paul preached. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, and from the glory of his power. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord? The unbeliever will never be allowed to stand in God's presence again, and their access to God will be eternally destroyed. We, however, shall enjoy the eternal presence of the Lord, and the glory of his power in heavenly places. Revelation 20 verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 10, When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed, in that day. When he shall come to be gloried in his saints, the long-awaited exiled Savior will then be recognized by all for what he has done for them. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11 Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, and the work of faith with power. This calling, believers are called to suffer for his name's sake. What did the apostles say after their arrest in Jerusalem? Acts 5 verse 41 And they departed from the presence of the council, 
rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, God allows some to suffer, who will do so with the right heart of service and love, and not for any selfish ambitions. Paul knew this better than anyone since him unto this day. Notice his words to the Philippians. Philippians 3 verse 10 that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Any suffering we endure is but a light affliction that serves to help us know Christ better by having a common experience with him. The work of faith, the work of establishing a church in their area to edify believers and to see the lost saved. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, and labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 12 That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. The reason for allowing some of us to go through suffering is so that we will bring glory to God, and bring others to God when they see us go through our trials, still praising God. Chapter 2 The Day of Christ 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1-2 to Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. We beseech you, Paul and his fellow laborers were begging the Thessalonians, to not be troubled in any way that the rapture had already occurred. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he descends from heaven into the clouds. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. Our gathering together unto him, Paul speaks about the rapture of the body of Christ when we meet him in the clouds. Then he uses that teaching which was revealed to him to teach about the return of Christ. Shaken in mind, people just thought they were living in the tribulation period because of their persecution. By spirit, an angel, by word, people were saying they were living in the tribulation period. By letter as from us, People had even forged Paul's name on letters teaching that they were living in the tribulation period at that time. The day of Christ is at hand, the return of Christ to the earth after the seven-year tribulation period. This is similar to what John the Baptist began preaching when he began his ministry, and what Jesus preached to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 2, and for colon 17-23, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that men of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. By any means, the ways, means, mentioned in verse 2 above. That day, is the day of Christ is addressed in verse 2 above concerning his return to set up his kingdom. A falling away, the word that is translated falling away is the Greek word apostasia, which is where we get our English word apostasy. This word is found only twice in the Greek. The other occurrence is found in the book of Acts and it is translated as the English word meaning forsake. It simply means to depart from something in the past. Acts 21 verse 21, And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Apostasia is the derived from its root word aphistemi, to depart, a falling away means a falling away, not a catching up. When the rapture occurs however, there will be a dramatic falling away from the truth of scripture. There already is a large-scale departure from the truth today. That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, a term used to identify the Antichrist, this is only used of one other person in scripture, Judas Iscariot. John 17 verse 12 Those that thou gavest me have I kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Judas is also called a devil by Jesus. John 6 verse 70 Have not I chosen you twelve? and one of you is a devil. It is for this reason that some think that Satan will reoccupy Judas' body during the tribulation period and become the Antichrist. This is pure speculation. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 Who opposeth, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. The Antichrist will stop Israel's sacrifices, and oblations at the midpoint of the tribulation period and demand them to worship him as God and Christ, thus making the temple of God desolate. Daniel 9 verses 26 to 27, And after threescore, and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city, and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice, and the oblation to cease, 
and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 11 verse 31 And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that mocketh desolate. This is speaking about the image of the beast that the Antichrist demands all to bow down and worship. Daniel 12 verse 11 And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that mocketh desolate set up. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 5 to 6 Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. When I was yet with you, when Paul first came to Thessalonica in Acts 17 verses 1 to 10 on his second missionary journey. What withholdeth, something or someone, is withholding, or hindering the Antichrist, he, from being revealed to the world. I believe it is the Holy Spirit residing in the members of the body of Christ, that he might be revealed in his time. This is speaking about the Antichrist during the tribulation period. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity doth already now work, is the opposite of the mystery of godliness found in 1 Timothy 3 verse 16. The mystery of godliness involves the body of Christ, while the mystery of iniquity involves Satan's spirit that Paul says in Ephesians is working now also in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 verse 2 Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It is Satan's mystery of iniquity program that he uses to deceive people into thinking Jesus is not who the Bible says he is. The mystery of iniquity is to deceive the masses of religious people to oppose God's mystery program that he dispensed to the Apostle Paul to dispense to us today. He who now letteth will let. The word let is an old English word meaning to hinder. The Holy Spirit will hinder the man of sin from revealing himself to the world until it is time for that to happen. We cannot know who he is today. Only those alive in the tribulation period will be able to determine who he is. The one event that will lead up to the tribulation period is the rapture in which God calls all his ambassadors home with him before declaring war on this Christ-rejecting world. The actual peace treaty that Israel signs will usher in the seven-year tribulation period and the reign of the Antichrist, not the rapture. There is an undetermined amount of time between the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation period. Probably a year, but it could be more or less. When we, the body of Christ, are out of here, the Holy Spirit that resides in every believer will depart with us. The body of Christ must be removed before the Antichrist can be revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8 And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And then shall that wicked be revealed, the Antichrist will not be revealed to the lost, but to those that put their trust in the Messiah of Israel during those days. The unbelievers will willfully believe a lie, and they will be damned for eternity for it. Verse 11 below. Notice the word wicked is capitalized in the text denoting a title. 1 John 3 verse 12 Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. 1 John 5 verse 18 We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 to 10 Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Him, whose coming is after the working of Satan, this is referring to the Antichrist. Satan's work is to be God's adversary in everything he is doing. That is even one of his titles. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The love of the truth, those who didn't believe, receive, the love of the truth, the gospel, were damned. To reject the truth of Jesus dying for them and rising again is to reject God's love. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 11 to 12 And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. If the tribulation saints do not receive the love of the truth, then they will receive strong delusion from God, and they will believe a lie, Satan's lie. They will have their chance early on and they should take it when it is offered to them, because they will not get another chance after they have taken the mark of the beast. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 13 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Paul, here, jumps back to the age of grace, church age, 
and talks to the Thessalonians as those who will not experience the strong delusion from God because they did believe God's truth. God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Salvation can mean different things at different times in the scriptures, for example, when Moses said, Stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14 verse 13 And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. He delivered the Israelites from Pharaoh's army, but they didn't get saved on that day. The Thessalonians did get saved when they believed the truth Paul shared with them concerning the gospel, and that belief of the truth delivered them, or saved them from the wrath to come during the tribulation period. They will be saved from experiencing God's wrath, because they received the love of the truth by belief of the truth, the gospel. See the note on verse 10 above. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God has appointed all who believe the gospel to obtain salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He called you by our gospel. This is a reference to the gospel that Paul delivered unto the Thessalonians back then and us today. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is further defined for us in Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught. These were new doctrinal teachings given to the churches when Paul established them. It was also those things that which were found in his epistles that he had delivered unto them, which were the inspired word of God for the churches to stand fast in. These were the commandments mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 2. All churches today should have a strong tradition of teaching the mystery that was delivered unto the Apostle Paul for us. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 16 to 17 Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Everlasting consolation, all that encompasses salvation, and good hope, believing in the blessed hope will produce in a believer good hope that can sustain them when they think they cannot go on. Chapter 3, The Word of the Lord, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 1 Finally, brethren, pray for us, that the word of the Lord may have free course, and be glorified, even as it is with you. Pray for us, that the word of the Lord may have free course, not restricted. Our prayers change things, so we are to pray like the Thessalonians, were so that the word of the Lord may have free course to reach individuals that need to hear it. Are you praying for people to see the mystery, and be glorified, in new believers as it is with the Thessalonians? 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 2, And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Verse 1 does not end with a period, it ends with a semicolon connecting it to verse 2. That we may be delivered, our prayers can also deliver others from unreasonable and wicked men. Who are you praying for? 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you, and keep you from evil. Establish you, establish and establish are similar words, but they have slightly different meanings. To establish us in grace teachings, just as he established his law covenant with the children of Israel, and keep you from evil, what greater evil can the Lord keep us from than the Antichrist himself and the tribulation period? The Lord is faithful to keep his word that we are not appointed unto wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 4 to 5 And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do, and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patient waiting for Christ. The things which we command you, our apostle has given us in the body of Christ commands to accomplish his will in this dispensation. Into the love of God, the Lord through his word, and our time in it will direct our hearts towards him. Into the patient waiting for Christ, the head of the church, Jesus, will return for us, the church which is his body. Colossians 1 verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 6 to 7 Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, 
for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Disorderly, God, commands us to withdraw ourselves from those who do not walk disorderly, not in the traditions which Paul gave to us. The tradition, the doctrinal things that were given to us from Paul's group we are to do, and they are to become traditions in our service to God. They are not optional. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 8 to 9 Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Not because we have not power, Paul had the right to expect to be taken care of physically, i.e., food, clothing, housing etc., comma, by those whom he ministered to spiritually. Paul wanted these new believers not to think Paul was in it for the money. As they matured Paul told the congregations that they should communicate with his expenses. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 14, 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 10 to 13 For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Busybodies, meddlesome in others' affairs. We are not under the kingdom program. We are to work for our own bread, food, and not to expect handouts. We are being disorderly in this present dispensation if we expect God, or others to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 14 to 15, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Note that man and have no company with him. Paul informs these believers that believers are expected to work and provide their own bread. If they do not, then that assembly has a responsibility to admonish that brother to find a job, so that he too can continue in well-doing with the rest of the saints. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 16 to 18 Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so, I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The second epistle to the Thessalonians was written from Athens. The Lord of peace, Jesus will institute of millennium of peace in the kingdom, followed by an eternity of peace after that. The salutation of Paul, it was written with his own hand as a token proof, in every epistle that he writes, to prove that he wrote that epistle. The salutation of Paul in his epistle was written by Paul himself in each of his epistles, and it would stand out from the rest of the epistle written by his penman, who wrote his words for him. Some say the salutation is the word Paul at the beginning of each of his epistles, while others believe it is his closing remarks in each of his epistles. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Some say verse 18 is the token that Paul writes in every epistle, but that would also mean that Paul wrote Revelation. Revelation 22 verse 21. John wrote Revelation, not Paul. Nowhere in this epistle are the Thessalonians told they will have to endure to the end of the tribulation period to be saved. There are no words of instruction to prepare them for such a time, because it is understood by them that they will not be here at that time. The End